Hi, I'm Pam Joyner, the General Manager of the Sweet Auburn Curb Market. The Sweet Auburn Curb Market is located at 209 Edgewood Avenue, on the corner of Jesse Hill and Edgewood, one block from Piedmont Avenue and the 7585 Connector. Melting point. Diverse. Eclectic. Unique. Fun. It was a lot of fun. I would say it's a great place. A great historical place here in Atlanta. This is one of the best kept secrets in Atlanta. I was impressed and I'm still impressed now. The food is good. It's a clean environment. They have a security outside the place. It's close to the hospital and around the residents and I thoroughly enjoy the place, I really do. Could you tell us a little bit about why you chose to open your business in the market versus any other place? Oh yes! Huh? <laughs> the reason I chose the market was I had recently divorced and I knew I had to do something and I, I just decided I'd open a restaurant. That's, that's what I've always done at some point or other. So I said I think I'll open a restaurant. My space was right over here to the right where all these people are sitting on this counter, and that's what it looked like most of the time. <laughs> it, it just, it feels so great to look over there and see all of these people having lunch at my old counter. I chose the curb market. I came down here actually really kind of accidentally. I tasted Grindhouse's chili and um, just came down and, and had a burger and walked around and really felt the energy. I mean, it has a very vibrant energy. Being from California, I've never seen anything like this. I heard it's a historical place where blacks at one time weren't allowed in it, and my brother did let me know about that. So today, to have a black president and to be in here, it's like a historic from the past coming to connect to the future in my day and age. So it's rewarding because it shows you how far we've come, although we still have a long way to go. Um, it just shows you that in this new day and age, truly the brotherhood that Dr. Martin Luther King stood for, we can find. Well, really the market was open in 1918. And it was named the, if they had a big tent. And the big tent where the white people go on the inside and shop. And they had stalls on the outside on the curb for the colored people to shop. And that's where it got its name, Curb Market, because the black shopped on the outside and the white shopped on the inside. In 1924, that's when they built the brick building and they moved on the inside. That's when they named it the Municipal Market. When I was coming up, they had two type of water down uh, at the curb market. They had a water set color that a water set white. I said, I just want to take that water over there. See how that water tastes, that white water. <laughs> the same. The same. <laughs> Up until the 70s, I raised my children over there. So it was a nice place to go and to buy, and um, my husband, he didn't make that much money, but when I got through shopping at that uh, curl market, I had enough food to feed two families. <laughs> Once the curl market was a place where you socialize. Oh yeah. oh yeah, you always meet somebody you know, oh, yeah. and ain't seen them in a long time, and you meet somebody you know, because see, that's the only time we really got out. Yeah, that's right. Go to the curl market. That's right. I've been coming here since I was a little baby. Yeah, I remember when they had chickens walking around here on the floor. Walking around while you shop? While you shop, they had chickens. <laughs> this is the essence of Atlanta here. Yeah. It didn't lose. You know, we just acquired, because of the city's growth, we acquired more groups. But it still got the same down home thing. One of the markets over, they had whole pigs for sale. And they would hang the pigs, they would have them hanging on a, a rack, and they would push them through the market to go to their stand and, and, and people would come and pick them up, they placed orders for them, and the children would go berserk. Just coming in here to see the things, that, that pig and stuff hanging up, it's scary. 
So then I started working in here and I got used to it. So I'm accustomed to having everything that you can eat from the pig. I have like four or five different customers. They come every week. Every week. Well, you know, the quality, it makes a difference. You know, treat people right, good quality. My father was a hunter uh, in Virginia and I come here and get rabbit as well. So I have rabbit, goat, and pig feet. And I bought steaks and sausages and pork chops, things that normal people eat. <laughs> In May of 1999, President Bill Clinton visited the market, which created quite a stir. Oh yeah, that's uh, something out of this world, you know. It's something that you never forget. Because being the president and uh, being the sitting president and coming in, the things they do before he even gets here for those few hours is incredible. Then about four days before he got here, they came and took out all our social security numbers and everything and ran them. And then uh, then on the day that he was supposed to be here, they brought the, uh, what you call, those metal detectors on the two main doors. They sealed all the windows, everything on this mic, so you couldn't see in from the outside. They signed for us. So what kind of do they ask my husband? You take a picture and say yes. Say he come in the picture right here. I think that it helps give the city character. I think in addition to having wonderful food and great opportunities for entrepreneurs to share their wares and good food, uh, it creates an environment that attracts people uh, into downtown. It gives people who live, work, and play here uh, something else cool to do. And every time uh, we can do that in Atlanta, I want to be a part of it. So I, I ran over today, I'm going to go and have a cheeseburger. It's really good to be out. I love food, street food. And I'm glad that we're able to do something innovative like this at the Sweet Auburn Curb Market. This is a way to regenerate a part of town that has such a, a high degree of history for Atlanta, but has fallen in, to some degree in disrepair. We've been trying to revitalize it, and this is a great way to do it. I think bringing good food to Atlanta is never a bad idea. We're an international city. We've got a way to taste all kinds of new um, foods and help entrepreneurs test out their ideas to see if they're going to work. The city owns this building, and so the city had a vested interest in keeping this large, centrally located building alive and vibrant and busy, And because there might not be a lot of other uses for sort of the layout that this building is. This building is just a wonderful place. It's located downtown where there's always going to be a lot of foot traffic. It's near the King Center. And I, you know, you're going to draw a certain amount of people just because of where it's located. Right at Grady Hospital, uh, what's the other one, Eggleston? You know, they changed the name on me, the Children's Hospital. So um, this is a good area. And now that they put all of the, the condos and the lofts and, and more housing downtown, gosh, it's only going to get better. It's not going to get worse. We now have more organic farms in, in our area, especially in the, I would say, the larger metro Atlanta or north central Georgia area than we ever have had before. And it's so exciting because um, people are really learning about organics and about the idea of a, a real organic system. And um, I would say that we have at least three times as many organic farms that are actually producing and supplying to markets such as mine or going to local farmers markets and even selling to a lot of the local restaurants. I, I prefer the term natural. We, uh, in my work, we do the best we can to emulate nature. We want to meet, make it as closely as possible, use methodologies that, that, are, that you can find in the environment around you. All the things that we do can be emulated, be replicated in the city. My work has three legs to it. First is the, uh, we grow food. We use food as a leverage for uh, providing agricultural education and creating horticultural literacy. And then the third leg is, is community building, bringing people together around food, using food as a, as a means for people to, get, to build community. Everyone who's interested in food is down here right now, tasting some delicious stuff off of people's food carts. 
And we're excited to have them here at the Sweet Auburn Curb Market because I think that was the original intention of the Sweet Auburn Curb Market back in the day when it was the municipal market, is to have local producers come and share their food, either stuff that they grew or stuff that they made, and share it with downtown Atlanta. Since I'm a foreigner, I feel very much uh, part of the diversity of this uh, country, so I, I, feel, I feel welcome. So I can see people from different colors, different nationalities, different languages, all of them speaking in English with their accents. It is nice. It is very, very nice. It's just like a little piece of the whole world in just one place. I think the future is going to be very, very good. I, I think that, that we are on solid, a solid part of the community. Right. And I can see where, where, where it's getting a little bit more diversified, and I think that's wonderful. The vision for the current management as well as the board of directors is to continue to add additional uh, varieties of vendors in the market as well as to have it become more of a vibrant meeting place, a place where people can gather and get together and also to offer more local and fresh produce from the farmers in the surrounding area and to make those choices available to everyone so they're more, more affordable and more accessible. Throughout the Sweet Auburn Curb Market's history, one thing remains true. The market will always be a part of Atlanta's past and future. A place where families shop and where friends become family.